Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're truly going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I thank God for all of you. Amen. Um, this is Progressive Life Worship and Training Center. I'm Pastor Dorothy Govan, and tonight we're just going to do our little study and do what needs to be done. But I just want to thank God personally for you and for tuning in and for those of you who uh, make it a habit of tuning in. Uh, just a couple of short things I want to remind us that on next week, let me just announce, on next week, we will not be doing Bible study. We'll be in our annual um, our twice a year conference. Our prophetic conference will be held, amen, on next Thursday night, amen. So we will be teaching classes. Our staff will be working the equipment, and we will be going live, amen, all around the country, Amen. As people are being trained to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. And I thank God for the opportunity. Amen. On behalf of our Apostle, Apostle Zen and Dr. Irma White and Pastor Lawrence and myself and all of the apostolic team that we are a part of. And if you have not heard of this or if you're interested in this, go on our webpage. Amen. It's still time to register. Our conference is next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Amen. And in that conference, we train, teach people to hear. Amen. It's a work. Amen. We do it virtually right now. And it's a good opportunity um, to have people to come. Amen. We have people from Missouri and all around Las Vegas, and they're online. We're online starting Thursday night at 7, then on Friday, and then a half day on Saturday. So just check our website out, amen. Contact us. Let us know you still time, amen, to register for that conference. I also want to just thank God for all of you who are sores into this ministry. I honor the Lord for you. You you are blessing us, and we are blessing you, and we thank God for it. Our boosters, as Pastor Lawrence called them, these are people who are interested in the ministry, helping us uh, further the gospel. They may not be members here or may not be in the sanctuary, but we receive blessings from all over. And I want to let you know God is blessing us, and there are people who continue to sow into our lives, and we thank God for them. And so we just send the blessings of God out to you wherever you are. Thank you for being a giver. Amen. Thank you for our members who are giver or givelify, giving to this ministry and sowing their tithes and bringing. And so because of the faithfulness of the members, and the boosters, we are able to continue to go on, but we are back in the sanctuary, amen. We want to invite somebody, if you're in the area, if you're able to come, come visit us on Sunday at 11 a.m., amen. I promise you there's a word in the house, amen. I thank God for all that God is doing, and we're preparing for our Mother's Day services coming up, amen. And so the brethren are going to be on the 
uh, front line, amen, and I thank God for them, and we're going to have an opportunity to just sit back and receive as women of God, as mothers, amen, and so I want to just invite somebody, if you don't have anywhere to go, or you're not out of part of a church, or you know someone who needs to find a church home, we invite you to invite them, amen, because we want to, one of the things that we're really trying to do is get people back in the sanctuary, and I, my pastor friends all over are saying that it's hard for people to come back, people have been out for almost two years, and it's difficult for them. But the word declares that we must not forsake to assemble ourselves together. So I want to invite you, and even my members, if you, you have gotten comfortable listening to us online, I want you to come to the church, come to the house of, so that we can do it. We, we, and we're online, but after the overflow, my God, we have had some awesome overflows, amen, which means that we go offline and we do the ministry. We pray and do deliverance and give words. And sometimes we're here an hour after we go off. Amen. So I thank God for um, the opportunity to just to be able to do what God has called us. We're doing ministry. We did ministry the whole two years. We were off uh, out of the sanctuary and we continue to do what we are. This is a deliverance ministry. We are a ministry that believe in hearing from the Lord and sharing what we hear. And so I encourage you to come. You need a word from the Lord. This may be a good place to come. Amen. I thank God for you. I thank God for my husband, Pastor Lawrence, is in the sanctuary with me tonight and technicians. Amen. I thank God for how God has been uh, so faithful to us and we love you. Amen. The uh, May birthdays, they'll do that on Sunday. Amen. But I want to just go on and wish everyone who's having a May birthday, a May anniversary, I wish you um, all of the best. Amen. God is blessing you, and we continue to speak the blessings of God over your life. Amen. We ask that if there's any sick among us, amen, we pray for you that God will touch your body, mind, spirit, and soul. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for another day's journey. God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. You are so faithful. God, every time we think of how good you are, our very souls cry out. You have brought us from such a long ways. You've kept us, God. You kept us safe. You protected us. You covered us in your blood. God, you didn't take any, we didn't, any of us go out as a result of COVID. God, as we look at, look at a million marks, a million mark God we didn't we weren't not one of them we were not numbered and we thank you God that you'll see fit to keep us in the earth and we pray that you would give us the understanding of what it is that we are supposed to be doing help us to do Holy Spirit we invite you in to help us we can't do anything without you but we can do all things through you through Christ who strengthens us and I praise you now and I ask you to bless this word tonight I bless ask you to bring the people on. I ask you to bless the heart of those who may hear and now help us not to be only hearers but doers of the word. We send your blessing out to the sick, to the shut in, to those who have lost someone, those who are going through bereavement, those who are going through some sickness, those who are going through some um, breakdowns, going through some things. God, we come against any spirit of suicide. We come against any spirit that will say that we have no hope. We release hope in the name of Jesus. You are our hope, God and we thank you for it right now. And so, God, as we go and expound on this word, we ask that somebody's heart will be pricked tonight, even as I teach. Somebody will be delivered, even as I teach. Somebody will be set free, even as we teach the word, because it is your word that brings life. And we thank you for it, and we give you praise, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. I thank God for you. Again, I want to just uh, reiterate um, on last Sunday, I had an opportunity to preach, and I think I shared, and I'm not, I'm not going to go over all. I want you, I encourage you to go um, and look at the teaching from Sunday, and I taught about a bread deficiency, and I want you, you need to go look that up and see what I meant by that, and, and, and then just for, because tonight, I'm really, I'm not going to re-preach that, but I wanted to complete um, just kind of talk a little bit about the bread, amen, and how important the bread. And I, I use the scripture, John 5, 35. I, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Now, I talked about 
And it's important that you realize that I'm doing the resurrection or what we call the post-resurrection. One of the things that we really try to do is highlight Jesus the Christ. We want to highlight something about Jesus. And even though we think that we are very familiar, it is important that you don't become so familiar with God or so familiar with Jesus that you just say, okay, I know what you're going to preach. I already know he says he's the bread. But I need you to begin to understand that God wants us to get a better understanding of who he is. Because if we get a better understanding of who he is, then we will be more intimate with him. We will serve him better. We will honor him better. We will give him the praise that is due him. So even though you may have a familiar scripture or a familiar um, uh, phrase or a familiar word that you said all of your life, oh, I already know he's the bread of life. Okay, what does that mean for you? What does that mean? mean now for you is it a rhema word is it a now word is he the bread of life one of the things the lord said to me he says there is a deficiency in the kingdom and it shouldn't be because i am the bread of life now it is amazing that there is a deficiency there is not a, a whole lot of bread we have stopped and i gave the example and someone said to me wow pastor how do you how do you come up with stuff like that but i remember when the lord brought back to my mind how my friend friend loves subs and 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 uh, whenever she gets a sub she asks them to take the bread out of the middle and and that is that's that's the Lord gave me that as a one of the ways in which the Lord deals with me is he gives me visions or bring things back to my mind and he will make an analogy or he'll give me something I'll have a vision and I literally could just see spiritually that many people have just taken the bread out of the middle uh, all of the dough all of the nutrients all all of the, the good stuff is taken out of the middle, and we're left with just a crust. And the crust symbolizes the outside, the outside of the bread. It deals with the fact that it, it has a certain look, but when you look, when you bite it, it doesn't have the substance it's, that, that it's supposed to have. And so many of us, we are believers, and we name the name of Christ, but when someone opens us up or when someone asks us something or when we are called upon or when we are called upon to fight or when we are called upon, when I mean fight, I'm talking about fight, it is the good fight of faith. When we are asked to do something in the kingdom of God, we don't have the substances. If the least little thing get us off track and we lose our mind, we go off on people. We want to do this and we don't want to help anybody. We don't want to do this and I don't feel like it. And so we're dealing a lot in our flesh and when we do that it's because the word has been compromised we are not eating on the word as we should amen and so a bread deficiency is very, very dangerous. It, it, is, it, is, it is when we when we start having a shortage, when we start falling short, when we don't have what it takes, amen. I don't know about you, but have you ever won a good sandwich and you discover you had no bread in the house? Oh, my God. I just want a sandwich. I just want some toast. And then you realize, and if, if you're like uh, our family used to be, when we were growing up, we, my mama used to say, who ate the last bread and didn't tell me there was no more bread? Okay, many of us are looking, we, we, we need bread and we need word and we need God. And then we wake up one day and we realize that we don't have any bread in the house. We, don't re we realize that we compromise. We realize that we, we didn't check, amen. I didn't check, got my meat out, got my lettuce and tomatoes and go in the refrigerator and there's no bread. Oh my God, and it's 1130 at night. I am not gonna put my clothes back on and go and look for some bread. Ah. I'm going to have to do without bread. And that's what many people have decided. Well, I'm, I, you know, I'm out here now. Well, I'm not doing this. Well, you know, people talk about me. Well, and, and so they don't go, they don't go for the bread. They don't look for the bread. So I want to talk a little bit about tonight, the importance of, uh, of this bread. And I want to just kind of give a little bit. So go back and look at what I said on Sunday, get an understanding of the bread of life. I talked about how we got to get an understanding because many people don't understand understand the bread uh, that I'm talking about. Seek God for kingdom assignment. Go back to the bread of life. The Lord says, I'm the bread of life. Go to the one and say, Lord, I need you to show me what to do with my life. 
come on. I need to, not enough people go back to the God, to the Lord and ask him what to do. We try to do life on our own. No, I want to do life with the bread of life. I want the bread. I have come that you have life. Come on, somebody. And that more abundantly. Many of us are not operating in the abundance life because we won't go back to the bread of life and ask him to help us with our life. Is that all right? So we want to do that. The third thing is I want you to recognize and embrace Embrace the bread of life. You, you, you may know Christ is something else, but I want to encourage you to recognize and embrace the bread of life. Bread in the Bible, and Jesus, in, in, in John 6 and 35, Jesus declared himself as the bread of life. And then, so as we look at this, now I want you to understand bread has been, it's, it's used 492 times in the Bible all throughout Old and New Testament. In John's gospel, it's 10 times just in one gospel. So you can find so many reference to, to bread. And, and every time it's referenced, it has to do with knowing or showing or recognizing, even in the Old Testament. Remember, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through all of them, but bread, which comes from heaven, gives life. This is, this is, this is the, the symbolism. This is the bread from heaven. Bread gives life. It's a gift from God that nourishes. It's a gift from God. Now, I just want you to see why Jesus called himself the bread of life. Bread in the Bible is, deals with a gift of God. Jesus is a gift of God. It has to do with giving life. Jesus said, I've come that you have life and that more abundantly. It has to do with nourish, nourishing you. It has to do with building your life up, strengthening your life, sustaining your life. So now you understand just for a few moments. Now, just quick, a quick reference to in the Old Testament. In the beginning, in Genesis, and I, I want to just kind of start here, and I wish I don't have time to deal with the whole thing, but in Genesis, if you go back to Genesis 3 uh, and verse about 319, it talks about um, Adam. It talks about, and, and I got it in the King James Version. The, the NIV say food, but in the King James Version, it says, in the sweat, in Gen um, Genesis 319, the beginning, in the beginning, in the sweat of thy face, shall thou eat bread. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was, was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou will return. Genesis 3.19 gives us a reference point for bread. That scripture, if you read a little bit, it talks about Adam having to work or earn or, or work hard, sweat for bread. Why? Because the woman or the wife or whomever you listened to and you ate of the tree that I told you not to, and because of your disobedience, you now have to work for the bread. Adam the bread started out as a curse. Adam, you have to earn, you have to work. The Bible says because of that, it caused physical hardship. They had to toil, they had to struggle, they end up dying. Jesus didn't intend for, God didn't intend for them to die. They was going to live forever. But when sin came in, then that compromised everything. So now, bread. Let me say this to you. You can either operate in the bread of life, or you're going to operate in the bread that was punishment for Adam. You're operating in the curse. If you are not embracing the bread of life, which is Jesus, you're operating in the curse. What does that mean? It's physical tall. I'm going to be working hard all my life trying to accomplish something. I'm going to be struggling all of my life trying to make sure that I have everything I need. I am going to be uh, 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 end up dying not knowing Jesus the Christ, unless I understand what the bread of life is all about. And so because God cursed, was a curse upon nature, Adam and Eve will experience this. 
Okay, so I just want to give you an understanding of why Jesus, we keep going back. You're going to see me. I'm going to give you a point of reference in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Adam and Eve, you sin. And because you sin, your bread is going to come hard. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to do it. When we go to the New Testament, we see Jesus giving bread. Okay, John 5, you see that he feeds the 5,000. On a numer another occasion, he gives bread. We see him breaking bread with his disciples. Okay, so the whole notion is I came to undo what the enemy caused you to do. I, I came to undo so that you don't have to work hard all your life trying to earn bread. Trying to earn your way back to God. Trying to get back in right standings with God. Oh, my God. Okay. According to John 6 and 51, write this down and go and check me out. I am. Now, now remember what I said in Genesis 3.19. John says, Jesus already declared in John 6.35, I am the bread of life. Then 6.51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Oh, my God. If anyone eat of this bread, he will live forever. What did I just tell you? What is part of the curse? They die. What is part of the living bread? What is part of the bread of life? I live. Somebody say, I live. I live. When I accept the bread of life, I embrace life. I live. He gives us eternal life. Yeah, we may go to sleep. We may have a, a mortician may put us in a, in a coffin, but we will live again. Come on, somebody. The reason I embrace the bread of life is because I realize that I don't want to be under the curse. I want to be under the blessing. Jesus said, I I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eat of this bread, if you receive this bread, if you receive me as the bread of life, he will live forever. He will, and the bread that I give for you, the life of the world is my flesh. I came down from heaven in the flesh. I went on the cross in the flesh. I died in the flesh so that you could have bread, the bread of life. I am the bread of life. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. When they was talking, when he was talking to them, they could not grasp this, but this is what happens. He knew that Jewish people had a reference. Let me tell you why they knew. Because they went to church, they went to Sunday school, they went to synagogue. Why? How do you know, Pastor? Well, when you mention bread to a Jewish person, automatically their mind goes to Leviticus 24 and 5. Leviticus 24 and 5 deals with them setting up the bread, the 12 loaves of bread that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, isn't it interesting that in John 5, Jesus said he fed all the 5,000. And if you know your word, the Bible says when they finished, they collected what? 12 loaves, 12 baskets full, okay? 12 is a number that represents God and his people. It represents a connection between God and his people. The way that he dealt with Israel by dealing with all 12 tribes. He told uh, in Leviticus 24 and 5, he tells them, set up 12 loaves of bread. Put six on the top and six on the bottom to represent each one of the tribes. This expressed uh, unity in the Lord. The un everything Jesus did in the New Testament, you can probably find a reference for in the Old Testament. 
When he, when he allowed them, some people said, well, it was one basket for each disciple. Okay, no problem. That's still 12. But it really symbolized, I want you to know that I came to reconnect with my people. So when I fed you with the, five, uh, the, the, the two fish and the five loaves of bread, I wasn't just feeding you because I didn't have. I was showing compassion. But everything he did was like pointing back to who he is. I am that bread that you heard about. I am that bread that your daddy talked about. I am the bread that's in Exodus, amen. I am the bread that's in Leviticus. I'm the bread that's in Genesis. You heard about it. Now, right here in front of you is he. Wow. So in Leviticus, it tells the 12 laws express the unity. Moses in Exodus, Moses for, uh, Exodus 40 and 23, he tells Moses to set up one loaf of bread. We call it a showbread. The showbread. Every time they look at that bread, they will recognize that me, my father, and I, Holy Spirit, we are one. One. Three in one, one loaf of bread say, this is the Christ. This is, you're looking, it's not no divided, it's not. We are one. The bread represents the, the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Moses 40, go check me out. Exodus 40 and 23, set up one loaf of bread. It represents the Father, Son, Christ communing with his people. Christ and the Lord and Jesus all on the same. So even in the Old Testament, Jesus was represented by bread. Wow. Bread then comes over in John's gospel. John too knows that bread is mentioned all throughout the scriptures and that it points to Jesus. So John in his gospel, he keeps calling the bread of life, the bread of heaven. He keeps using the bread symbolization. He uses the bread to symbolize that God, that Jesus is in fact who he says he is. Amen. Can somebody grab that? Jesus is in fact who he says he is. He is. And everything he does in our life is to keep reminding us, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread. Come on. I am the one. I don't need to prove myself. I am who I said I am. So in using bread, because bread, he fed the multitude. He breaks bread. And one of my favorite pieces that I'm just going to read as a reference tonight, as, as, and, and because we're in this season, and we have preached this. I remember one of my elders preaching this last year, but I want to make a reference to bread. I mean, I want to just talk about what happens when you come in contact with this living bread, amen, with the bread of life. It's found in Luke. I know we're talking about John, but look at Luke's gospel for a moment. Luke 24. And you know the story very well because it has to do with the road of Emmaus. And it has to do with, it's the first day of the resurrection. Pastor Lawrence talked about all the things that's going on this road. But I want to just look at how this bread played into that. Because Jesus is interested in letting us know that I am the bread of life. And so um, 24, Luke 24 and 28. And that this was when the two disciples was walking, going back on the road of Emmaus. And verse 20 says, and 28 says, and they approached the village to which they were going. That's 28. Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them he took bread somebody say bread he took bread gave thanks broke it and began to give it to them the first thing I want to say tonight when you get a clear picture of the bread of life your eyes will come open wow what you're saying pastor I can be walking with the Lord and not embracing him as the bread of life. 
I can be having a conversation with the Lord and not allow him to be the bread of life in my life. I can be praying. I can be walking. I can be. And so I need you to understand that this whole notion or this declaration or this bread discord that, we, that Jesus is having in John 6 is saying that there are a lot of people who know about bread. They know of bread. They know different kinds of bread. They know all kinds of things. But until your eyes are open, you are not operating through the bread of life. These two disciples were people that God knew, that Jesus knew. They obviously had worked with him, walked with him, whatever, and they did not recognize him. And so the text helped us to understand. It says, when he started to break the bread, because anytime the Lord uses bread to demonstrate who he is, it is an attempt to open up our eyes. Okay, he does not want us to operate outside of the bread. He, he stopped on Sunday afternoon on the first day so that these people, these two people will be able, their eyes will be open and they will get a good view of the bread of life. Everybody, I love what Pastor said a few weeks ago. He said, Jesus met everybody where they were. Remember when Thomas doubted, Pastor did that and told us Thomas doubted and Jesus came. Came back a week later, told him touch his, uh, put his hand in his in the holes in his hand because during this time Jesus said, "I've got to be what other what everyone needs me to be." So if you need to see me as the bread of life, I'm gonna stop dying, come back, walk with you, talk with you, stay with you until you get the revelation that I am the bread of life. Now I've been with you all day long, and we walked all the way here. I was gonna go, but I'm gonna stay here until you get the revelation come on somebody he says I need us to get the revelation that I am the bread of life he says I'm going to stay with you and then it says when he took the bread and began to break the bread they began to realize wait a minute wait a minute I recognize this. I've been in this presence before I've seen this before now I understand why you walk with us talk with us then their eyes were open and they recognized him. Somebody said, God is trying to open our eyes so that we would recognize him. Please don't miss this in the text. Please don't miss this because there are so many of us that are walking with God and talking with God, but we don't recognize his power. Come on, somebody. We don't recognize his authority. Come on, somebody. We don't recognize what God want to do. We don't believe that God can use us. We don't believe that God can make a way out of nowhere. We don't believe that God is a miracle worker. We've got to recognize that he is the bread of life. I came down from heaven to show man who I really am. I came down from heaven so that I will empower you to be who I need you to be. Somebody said my eyes need to be open. Amen. I got to embrace this bread. I've got to recognize that God is trying to do I know some of you said, well, pastor, we already know this. Well, if you know this, then I need you not to be like these disciples and say, oh my God, didn't our hearts burn? Well, yeah, it did. But what God is saying, he says, I need you to know, but I'm going to come back. And I've, I'm going to tell you, God told me to tell you, you want your heart to start burning again? Open your eyes to who he is, the bread of life. Open your eyes because some of us, our fire has gone out. Why has our fire gone out? Because we don't recognize the bread of life. We don't see him as he is we don't believe him for what he can do we don't believe God is able we, we we're just like the people in John 6 we know of but I want us to get it come on I want us to recognize because I don't know about you but I need my heart to burn again I need my eyes to be open I need a deeper revelation of who God is I want to see God what like I've never seen him before I want to see miracle signs and wonders I want to do miracle signs and wonders come on the only way we're going to be able to do that is our eyes have got to be open come on somebody say open up my eyes Lord God start my heart to burn again amen I I know that you are the bread of life. I'm going to begin to embrace you 
as the bread of life. Oh, my God. It, God. God talks about this all throughout Scripture, how we need to understand. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. I came down. If anyone eat of this bread, you are supposed to be operating in a certain way because you recognize the bread of life couple of things, and I'm, I'm, I don't have much time, but I want you to know we, if our hearts did burn within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures. My God. And then when you begin to recognize the bread of life, the next thing is you're going to really realize I want someone else to know that he's the bread of life. And so I like that another piece. In John's gospel, the sixth chapter, I'm going back again. I'm going back. That's my foundation of scripture, John um, 6. So because it is in that scripture that we call this um, the bread of life discord. This is where he talks about the bread of life. And John says um, at this point, and I want to look at John uh, 6 and 35 through 37. 35 through 37. And I've read some of it. Um, then Jesus declared, I am. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of, none of all that has been given to me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father will in every... For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believe in him shall have eternal life. I will raise him up at the last day. Now, John, in this gospel, in, in John 6, 35, all the way to 48, if you read that, it's called, the, you'll see, the bread of sacrifice. It has to do with being the bread of life. But how, what was, what, what is this whole piece about? That you are the bread of, you are sacrifice, not only the bread of life, but then you brought in the sacrificial piece. The reason you are the bread of life is because you made the sacrifice. You made the bread sacrifice. This points to Calvary. Oh my God. The bread was broken. You know when we have communion, we said the bread, we break the bread, and then when we give it to you, we said this is his body. This is his body. The bread speaks of the body, the, the broken body. It speaks of his body. It speaks of his death. It speaks of his that for the sinner. All sinners must eat this bread or they will have no life. Oh, my God. And if you're not a sinner, then you need to eat this bread continuously so that you will continue to embrace life. This is about there is no life outside of Jesus. There is no life outside of Jesus. I know people think they live in their best life. That's a new saying. I'm living my best life. You may think you're living your best life, but it's no life outside. Why? Because every other kind of life is temporary. Wow. If I'm single, that's temporary. If I'm married, that's temporary. If I'm living a rich life, that's temporary. If I'm looking, living a, 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 a poverty-stricken life, that's temporary. All of that is going to pass away. And so it's important for to em us to embrace the bread of life so that we don't become attached to other types of bread, other types of life. We have to recognize there is no life outside of Jesus. Jesus is not only that. Another thing Jesus does, the reason we need to embrace the, the, the bread of life. Bread is a sustainer. The bread of life, Jesus is our sustainer. Say that, sustainer. He sustains us. Bread of life is the food that we need in order to make it. We need food to make it. Bread and water. Food. Spirit. The word and the food. The word is the food. 
The water is the spirit. You need bread and water to make it. You need, you, you, may, not be, you may not always have no meat, but you're gonna have to, you, got, you need some water and you need some bread. You need the word of God and you need the spirit of God in order to make it. The bread of life is our sustainer. It's just the food that is needed in order to make it. John 6 and 33, for the bread of God is he who come down from heaven and give life to the word, this, to the world. John 1 and 14, and the word became, y'all know this, the word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. We need the word. One writer says, the bread of life is not physical bread at all, even though that's what most folks focus on. But the bread of life is spiritual. It has to do with spiritual renewal. It's the renewal, the bread that is renewed, the spiritual renewal that leads to salvation. It leads to a full life in God. Get filled up with the bread. It deals with coming into who you are. It deals with growing up. You feed your children. You give them bread. You grow them up. It's about growing up. Bread of life has so many entities that we cannot just stop at saying, I know God. I know of God. I know of the bread. No, I need every day. I need. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. I need bread every day. That's why we say that in our prayers. That's why he told them to say that in their prayers. When he taught them to pray, he says, make sure you say this because you you're not going to get one piece of bread and that's all you eat for the rest of your life. You're going to need bread to sustain you. You're going to need bread to grow you. You're going to need bread to teach you. You're going to need bread to open your eyes. You're going to need bread to cause your heart to burn. Wow. Bread of life. We will never be satisfied spiritually unless we know and embrace Jesus as the bread of life. Jesus continued to get, we, we got to continue to get to know him every day. Jesus is essential to our growth. His word is, is necessary. Without this bread, there is no continuation. I know it sounds like I'm doing a lot of repeat, but I need you to understand. John said this is just one aspect. We are trained that if a writer in the gospel uses a word one time, two times, three times, it's very important. Four times, oh my God. Five times, oh my God. John says, I'm going to use this ten times so that you will know. Pastor Lawrence used to talk all the time. He says, it takes ten times to, do, to get us to do something positive and one time to undo it. John says, Ten times I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk to you about this bread. I want you to understand that it is the bread that holds things together. My God. Now, I know some of y'all may not know this, but you know, when I was growing up, my mama used to take bread and put in different kinds of things. And I used to ask her, Mom, why you put a slice of bread in meatloaf? Mmm. Tell y'all a little secret. She said, you put crumble breadcrumbs. Now, we do breadcrumbs now because we big time now. But my mom used to take a piece of bread, and I still do that sometimes. Take a piece of bread, crumble it up, put it in your ground beef, and it caused the hamburger, caused your meatloaf to stay together. Jesus is the bread that causes us to stay together. He holds things together. There's a scripture for it, not meatloaf. There's a scripture for holding things together. Hebrews 1 and 3, the son of the radiance of God. Hebrews 1 and 3 says, uh, in the NIV version, it says, the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by the powerful word. I hold it together. The bread holds it together. Come on, somebody. I just want to get you on, on board with the bread of life. I just want you to, I want, he says, Jesus give life, but not only that, but he holds 
all things. He sustained things. He holds things together. Oh, my God. A sandwich. You put one piece on the top, one piece on the bottom. It holds things together. So one of the ways in which Jesus says, use me, understand me as the bread of life, I want to help you hold things together. I want to sustain some things. I believe that's why many of us can't sustain. Have you ever noticed that there's a lot of instability in the kingdom of God? Folks can't, they don't want to stay nowhere. They don't want to, they don't want, a lot of folks, to, I used to be a preacher. I said, how do you used to be a preacher? You're not a preacher anymore. How you used to be, I, I, oh, I used to sing. I don't sing no more. How, how do you do that? How, how you know, how, how do you? Uh, I don't do all that no more. Uh, uh, that was just a season I was in. It, there's no sustaining. There's no, nobody want to hold on because we got we to gotta have something to hold us in place. I don't get mad because somebody, and stop doing the will of the Father because somebody talk about me in church and somebody said someday looked at me funny. They didn't clap when I got finished. They didn't look like they was enjoying my worship. Folks don't want to worship no more because somebody looked at them funny. Folks don't want to pray no more because somebody starts talking about them. They pray too long. They pray too slow. They pray. Wait a minute minute come on Jesus said I want to sustain you I want to hold you together I want you to know I want to minister to you I don't want you to walk off the job oh come on somebody I don't want you to walk off I don't want you to walk out of the marriage I don't want you to give up I want to I want to be a sustainer I want to hold it together I know it seems like you're about to fall apart but I dare you to embrace the bread of life I dare you to begin to say God open up my eyes I dare you to say Lord let my heart burn again. I dare you to say, God, I need you. I need to see you. I need to know you in the way that I've not known you. God, I need a piece of bread. I just need a piece of bread. I just need a piece of bread. I just need a piece of bread. Come on, somebody. I just need a little more bread. Jesus says, I sustain all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sin, look, this is still Hebrews 1 and 3. After he provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of majesty, of the God. He's at the right hand. Listen, the reason I can hold together, you see me as the bread of life. I didn't stop. I am interceding. I'm seated. I'm watching. I got you. I didn't just come to save you, but I came to help you to sustain your life. My God, this is why, this is why Matthews, and as well as Luke 4, but I chose Matthew tonight. Matthews 4 and 4. Remember Satan? Remember Satan met Jesus in the wilderness? Remember after he was baptized, he went into, the Bible says the spirit led him into the wilderness, okay? And, and, and most people don't even realize the Lord was dealing with Satan trying to get him to deny that he was the bread. He asked him, catch this. He asked, he said these words. He says, he answered, no, no, he said these words. He said, if you be the son of God, y'all remember? If you are, if you are the son of God, what, what, what does Satan try to do? See, the, the reason we have to embrace the bread of life is because Satan is constantly trying to get us to think that the bread is no longer valuable. Satan tried it on Jesus. Right after he was baptized, right after God says, 
this is my son in whom I am well pleased. You see, what happens is you've got to constantly remind yourself that I'm connected, that I embrace Jesus as the bread of life. So even when life gets tough, I'm not going to deny him. Even when life gets tough, I know that he's still with me. Even when I'm in my desert, come on somebody, even when I'm in the wilderness, even if I go in the wilderness, even if I wake up and Satan is all around me, I still have to know that I am in relationship with the bread of life. My life, I have life and that more abundantly because I'm connected to what? He can't, I can't give you something that I'm not. Jesus can give us bread because he is the bread. Come on, somebody. I can give you bread. I can sustain you. I can do whatever needs to be done because I am the bread of life. Satan tried to get him to deny. And this is what he tried to get him to do. He's doing what we said we will not. He says, you know, there's a bread deficiency. You in this wilderness, and I know you're hungry. I know you're hungry. Come on, come on. Bread deficiency. I know you're hungry. And if you be the son of God, why don't you turn these stones into bread? Wow. From the beginning of time, Satan dealt with the bread in the garden in Genesis. Y'all remember? I set you up. Now here we are in the Gospels, and Satan is using the same old trick. If you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus answered. This might be my favorite. Jesus answered. It is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Okay? Man is never going to be able to make it on just natural, physical bread. But every word that comes from the mouth of God. I don't need to turn the stones into bread because I am the bread. Wow. Satan will try to make us doubt that Jesus is the bread. He has spent all of his time trying to get us to turn stone into bread. Turn whatever we have into Jesus. Whatever we need, another source. Follow my lead and you will have another source. Stones will become bread. And many of us have fallen for the lie. But I declare tonight that we're going to rethink. We're going to revisit the bread of life. Jesus gives life because he is the bread of life. Listen to this. Go back. One, one, one more. Turn over. One, one verse of scripture. I want you to just look at John 5 and 21. This is what it says. For just as the Father raised the dead and give them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he pleased to give it. Jesus gives life because he is the bread of life. He gives life. Now, here's what I want you to understand, and I'm closing. Manna in the Bible is also one of the, the pieces that sometimes um, is used as bread because manna was released from heaven, and it is there, there are several words. The showbread, the loaves, manna, all of these are uh, pieces or handle um, talking about the bread that is from heaven. And so manna from heaven, according to Deuteronomy 8, 
was sent for a particular purpose. Now listen to this. I know it was about feeding them, but look what Deuteronomy 8 and 3. You can read this when you get home or later on. But Deuteronomy 8 and 3 says, this is why Jesus is better than manna. Listen to this. He humbled, 8 and 3 says, he humbled you, causing you to be hungry. Then he fed you with manna. I need you to know. Well, well, let me just read this. Then he fed you with manna, which neither you nor your father had ever known. To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Here's what I want you to understand. There is a particular reason why there's a hunger. The hunger that is in us has been created by God so that we can come back to the one that is able to satisfy. It was his intent when he did it in the, in, in the, in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. He says, part of this humbling process is I cause you to be hungry. Come on, somebody. Say, I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more. There is a hunger that the Lord causes. And that hunger is designed to be filled by the word of God. It is not supposed to be filled by things, people, places, things. It is to be filled. The hunger that we feel that many of us are trying to satisfy with everything else is designed to humble you, all right? So, and cause you to be hungry and then feed you with manna. But instead of manna, Jesus said, I am the bread. They had to go out every day and get a little bit at a time. He says, I've come in the fullness so that you can have all that you need without having to go back out every day and, that, and, and go back and pick up manna. I'm better than manna. I need you to understand that I want to do a demonstration. I want you to know, even though you go to Subway, even though you go to Jimmy John's, that's never going to satisfy you. Because I've created a hunger that only my word, the words that come from God, is going to feed you. I need us tonight to just grab the revelation that God has created a hunger in us. And we cannot feel that hunger with anything other than the word of God. We've got to go back. And begin to realize from the beginning, Jesus said, God said, man cannot live on physical bread alone. But the power, the word, and Jesus says, I'm better than this manner. I will fill you. Bless are those who hunger and thirst. For righteousness sake, they shall be filled. I just want to tell you tonight, I want to challenge you tonight to go back and ask God, Lord, give me more bread. They may have taken it out of our physical. They may have taken it out, your carbs out, cut back on your bread. But I promise you, if you embrace the spiritual bread, every problem that the natural bread has been causing you can be healed by the spiritual bread. There's a word. There is a word. Jesus said to the woman one time, I've come for the children. The bread belongs to the children of Israel. The law, he, she, the loss, and she says, she says to him, yes, sir, I know that. 
I know it came for, for the Jewish. I, I know, I know. But even the dogs can have the breads from the table. The crumbs that fall is enough to get me out of where I am. God says, I don't want you to just have crumbs. I've come that you have the full loaf. Everything you need is tied up in the bread of life. I came to impart life into you so that you can feed others. I came to defeat Satan, and I came to remind my people that though I will feed you with natural because I have compassion. I meet every need according to my riches. But my desire is that you know me as a bread of life. I'm not just seeking your hands. I'm not coming after you because you can feed me. I'm coming after you because I embrace you as a bread of life. That's the message of John's gospel. When he talks about bread. Now, there are other ways in which he talks about it. Because what John does, he, he, pours, he builds a gallery for you to glean from. But one angle, one thing he wants you to know, if you embrace Jesus as the bread of life, you will not hunger or thirst again. Kind of reminds me of a John 4 when Jesus said to the woman, if you drink this water, that's another story. But tonight, I want you to begin to pray and ask God to give you some more bread. Let his word minister to you. Go back. I only gave you like a few. I told you 492 times Bread is mentioned in the Bible. Wow. That's a lot. And it always points to the fact that man will never be satisfied until they embrace the bread of life. So I hope you will just, I just want to challenge you this tonight. I just want to challenge you. And so I want to pray. I'm going to pray. And I'm just going to join my faith with you. And I'm going to say, God, we are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, fill us again. Fill us again. Fill us again. God, maybe we've run out of bread. Maybe we have you know, maybe we just just, just, just tired of eating. Just don't want to eat no more. Just because things are not going like we want them and it seems like we just, just don't have time to eat no more. We're not getting filled. It just, it's not satisfying anymore. Whatever the reason is, God, I pray now that you will cause us to be hungry again. That we will humble ourselves enough to say, I need more bread. That I won't look at my physical self. I won't get caught up in what the doctors are saying. I, this, this, this is not about, man shall not live by bread alone. I'm not talking about wonder bread. I'm not talking about sunbeam bread. I'm talking about the bread of life. I'm talking about the sacrifices, the bread that sacrifice. I'm talking about the bread that is life. So, Father, I pray tonight that that hunger will be stirred up again. I pray tonight, God, that we will come seeking after you, asking you what word, what do you have to say to me? Open up our eyes, open up our eyes so that we can see you. Open up our hearts again so that we can burn for the bread. Open up our minds. Open up our spirits. 
God, let us wake up in the middle of the night saying, I'm so hungry. Let us go to bed at night saying, I'm hungry for more. Let us do what is necessary, God, to embrace the bread of life. God, and we want to speak to Satan. Satan, we just renounce you. We know that you have tried to put in a substitute. You have tried to give us a wrap. You tried to tell us that we can have other kinds of bread that may be better for us. But we renounce that. Maybe in the natural, we can eat a wrap. Maybe in the natural, we can have some crackers. Maybe in the natural. But in the spirit, we want the living bread. We want the bread of life. That will cause us not to be hungry again. Not to be thirsty again. We want bread. God, not only do we want bread, we want your spirit. Oh, God, we need you tonight. We need you tonight, God. I feel the hunger. I feel the hunger that people are saying, maybe that's what's wrong with me, Pastor G. There's been a bread deficiency. Maybe that's what's going on with me, why my heart is not compassionate anymore. Maybe that's what's going on with me, the reason I'm not burning anymore. Maybe that's what's wrong, the reason I'm not excited about God anymore. Maybe something is going on inside of me. But I'm going to stop and ask the Lord to feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed us until we want no more. That's our prayer tonight. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. That living bread. That bread that fills you. The bread of life. Feed us until we want no more. God, I join my faith with those who are in, who are believing you and we are declaring that we are going to be filled. So I thank you and I praise you even tonight as we lay down, as we go to bed tonight, we're going on a full stomach. As we wake up in the morning, we're going to wake up on a full stomach because the bread of life would have fed us until we want no more. So Father, I thank you for this word and I pray that it will find place in the hearts of your people and then it will cause them to grow. And we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We invite you to come back with us on Sunday, Mother's Day. Celebrate your mama. Amen. If your mom is not alive, amen. Thank God for the time that you had her. Amen. Don't let, don't, don't declare and decree over your life that it's not going to be the saddest day of your life. It's not, you're not going to cry all day long. Come on, declare. I decree and declare that I have had my mom. I love my mom. I thank God for the time. I thank God for the legacy that she left behind. And I want you to celebrate. Even if she's gone on, I want you to celebrate who you are because of who she was. And I thank God. And come on to church on Sunday, amen, and we'll be here. Remember, next Thursday night, we'll be in our conference. And so um, we ask you to join, read. Your, if you're not in a conference, get in your word. Read the Bible. Do some study. Save God. Take this time and use it for a time to re, uh, fellowship with the Lord while we're at the conference. Amen. So I bless God for you on behalf of Pastor Lawrence and myself and the entire progressive family. We love you and we praise God for you in Jesus' name. Be blessed until we meet again.